Do you ever just hit like the photographer's block when you're trying to edit photos and you're just like, I need a change of pace. Speaking of a change of pace, I just got a new coffee mug for my new Johnny Cupcake sticker. Check this out. It is a clone trooper cupcake fied and I threw it on a Yeti because I was trying to figure out when am I actually going to put this sticker on? So I let Instagram decide would I go new water bottle or new coffee mug and Instagram voted coffee mug. So I got a white Yeti for my white clone trooper sticker and before I stain it with the brown magic of coffee, I was thinking maybe trying to make like a quick ad and instead of just using just this Yeti, I'll use all three of my Yetis to just try to come up with a 15 second ad because that seems to be on the rage right now. Because I think if you notice on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, ads have to be so short to meet the credentials without being skipified. So everything's 15 seconds. So I wanna see if I can come up with a creative way to make a 15 second ad for my coffee mugs. But the bigger question is, how long can I go without putting my hair up? Because having it down is gonna get obnoxious. All right, for setting all of this up, the stuff I'm gonna be using, I've got my three Yetis. I've got a black spinner table, which might be hard to see because it's on a black actual coffee table. But this is here, it spins. I've got a portable aperture MC light. This will allow me to kind of illuminate the coffee mugs in the way that I want to with as much light as I want. And I can also set it up so I can turn off my main light, which I'm using, which is the Aperture 120D, and just use this to basically make the cups kind of come from the darkness to light and then back into darkness if I take the light away. Right behind that, I've got this little dolly that I made with my brother in a do-yourself dolly video. If you need something to get nice smooth shots and you don't want to pay up for an expensive dolly, you can make one of these, it's real simple, just check out that YouTube video. And then for a backdrop, I've got this giant portable stand that kind of acts as a reflector in a sense. It's white on one side, black on the other. But if you don't have one of these, you can just use black construction paper or, or black styrofoam board. It works just as well. You just want to make sure it's not super reflective, so you're not getting a glare from the light onto the cardboard, which is then bouncing onto your subjects in the shots. So unfortunately, like the big YouTubers out there that often show you what they're shooting through the camera as they're shooting it, I unfortunately can't do that because my secondary camera is the Mark III, which is a great camera if you're still using it for photos. It's great for portrait photography or really syncing awesome low light photos. But since it's such an older model, it unfortunately doesn't have the ability to do 1080 or 4K. So I'm gonna be using it as the dummy camera as I'm showing you the kind of shots I'm getting. But the shots I will be taking the actual clips with will be on the camera I'm actually recording this on. So it's gonna be a lot of double takes, but I'm still gonna be getting the same kind of shots with the ones I'll be showing you with the Canon Mark III as my dummy camera. All right, so for this first shot that I really wanted to do, it's not the first shot in the sequence, it's just the first one that came to mind. By the way, this commercial is gonna be really a bunch of shots that I just thought were cool and I'm gonna figure it all out later in post, but you're gonna see it already as you've already seen it in the intro. But this one shot, I've got the three coffee mugs all on the rotating table and they're all rotating slowly. So I really want this shot to be kind of, it's focused on one and then it rotates to the next and then it focuses on that one and then rotates to the third and focuses on that cup. So it's kind of, they're slowly rotating all at the same speed. So then in pose, I can speed ramp it to be the exact speed I need it to be so that they all evenly get the same sort of transition in sense. So the way I angled my camera, dummy camera, pretend this is on a tripod, I'm not hand holding it for the shot, but I've got the camera at the same height as the cups, but I've actually got it just a tad lower and angled up, just so it makes the cups look a little bit bigger, a little bit more important in a sense, instead of being straight on. Just kind of giving a more unique kind of look to it than versus your boring, flat, straight on angle that you see in most commercials. So these next few shots, what I've been doing is basically supporting my camera on a tripod right about here. I've been taking the MC Aperture Light and just flashing it back and forth, up and down and left to right, to kind of just go from complete darkness to complete light. And what that actually looks like is this. So just pretend I'm still, my camera is right here, straight at it. So it's basically I'm taking this light and I'm slowly just flashing it back and forth, the long way, kind of just like slowly back and forth, kind of changing up my rhythm a little bit and then switching to a more of an up and down, really making sure that I am actually facing the light towards me 
and then up and away. So you still get the full consistent light going in and out on the actual subject. All right, so the shot you saw first and the ending shots, the two hero shots I'm throwing in, basically what I've done is I've taken the legs off my coffee table so that's a lot lower to the ground. Put a little box underneath it just to raise it a bit so it's at the same height as my homemade dolly. Threw my camera on it and basically all I'm doing is rolling my camera back and forth. And so it's not on an automatic focus. So it's basically once my camera gets close to the mugs, basically that's when it's crisp focus. But once it pulls away, it goes out of focus. So if I push in, it's going from out of focus to in focus. And then additionally what I did after is I took my MC light and I turned this on and basically matched it. So as my light was close to my coffee mug, as I pulled the camera away, I took the light away. So then it looks like it's going from pitch black to then illuminating the mugs as they're in focus. So all you have to do to pull it off cleanly is to basically do in reverse. So it's already set up here and all I have to do is pull away the camera and the light at the same time. And then that's how you get that effect. The one thing I do have to be conscious though, which hopefully Warp Stabilizer can save me with, is that my floor isn't fully even. And because of the divots in the wood, the camera is slightly shaking just enough where you can kind of notice it if it's not in slow motion. So I'm gonna throw Warp Stabilizer on it. I think it's just enough where Warp Stabilizer can fix it. If not, I'm gonna to have to scrap it and think of another way to throw this all together. But I've just got my fingers crossed that's gonna work out in post. Four minutes is just long enough to take a quick little break and introduce you to today's sponsor. Which doesn't seem to be here right now. And that's because I don't have one. I'm still a small creator. Small YouTube channels take a while to get a few sponsorships. A lot of the ones you see people like me who have eventually gotten big doing is like Storyblocks, Squarespace, or any kind of photography related piece. And then there are some clothing brands I will throw a sponsorship into ads every now and then, but still being a small creator, if there's any brands out there that would want to help create a video and sponsor it, I'd love to work with you guys. But let's get back to editing because this is finally wrapped up. That unfortunate moment when you're finally out of coffee. But I've spent the past few hours actually editing this all together. Instead of having you guys sit here and watch me edit every individual clip, I've just gone ahead and pieced it together. So for editing program, I used Adobe Premiere for the video. For sound, I use Epidemic Sound. So now I'm just gonna jump into this with you guys, show you the different clips, how I piece it together, how I kind of set time limits for each one, and how I edited them all to make a coherent video. So with the shot, with the 15 second time limit, I've got three different cups. I only want to feature my newest one first. So I need to come up with a way or kind of a time schedule to figure out how I'm gonna actually put this all together. So I thought 15 seconds, five seconds per cup. But then I need to think about intro, the outro, and then the transition. So I was thinking three seconds for each detail shot of the cup. So I've got three seconds of each detail shots. And then one second as an intro to catch the attention. So the intro is just the lone clone trooper cup by itself. Then one second for an outro with all three cups together. And then transitioning from cup to cup is two seconds in total. So with all those different little clips and transitions, it's a full 15 seconds. And when it came to each individual cup by itself, I wanted to get a two to three detail shots of each part of the cup. So I can't do two seconds of each detail shot because then that'd be way too long. So what I ended up doing was just stacking the detail shots on top of each other and using different layer masks to basically separate them in each part of the frame, either in thirds or halves. So for the clone trooper one, I really just wanted to include the top so it was a Yeti. So we established that it's a full coffee mug. And then for the other two, I just basically did two shots of the whole detail and basically a little pinpoint part of the sticker, just kind of zooming in on a little bit. So if you remember earlier when I was trying to get that first shot of all three of the mugs rotating evenly on the table, after doing a few shots with the light afterwards, I thought that'd be cool to try to get with the light kind of shining in and out on the mugs as they're rotating around. Now the problem with that was, it's a lot harder to time it manually with the light as the automatic table is spinning around. So to fix that in post, what I did was I added a color mat to it, which is this pink bar right here. And I can keyframe it so that with the time mapping of the actual clip to make sure the speed is going correctly, 
I can do my own custom fading with the light in and out so it still looks like I purposely timed it correctly and that's what this looks like. So when it came to sound, I really wanted the background music of the themes from these franchises. But then the problem was, if I throw that into this video, then YouTube will get upset with it. So what I'm going to do is do one set of this video with actual theme music and just throw it on my portfolio channel, which you can check out here. But for this video itself, I'm just going to use the music and sound effects I got off of Epidemic Sound. So for the Star Wars one, I basically tried to find like a space music and throw in some space blasters from Epidemic Sound to kind of make it sound like the clone troopers kind of scenes when you watch the movies and they're fighting. For Game of Thrones, I found some like Northern Celtic music and throw in some sword fighting and just kind of clashing to make it feel like it's like Game of Thrones kind of feeling to it. For Power Rangers, I threw in some heavy rock music just because when it comes to the Power Rangers theme song, it's heavy rock, but I don't know what really sound effects I would really throw in with Power Rangers. That kind of seems right, just because I haven't seen Power Rangers for so long. That I just kind of let the music play by itself and then use that to fade out the video. And then throwing in the Johnny Cupcakes logo at the end, I just added two little whip whoosh sounds just so that it had something to do with the logo appearing and then everything fading out. Just so it didn't seem to appear out of nowhere for no reason and then end the video like that. And then just as a quick disclaimer, a lot of the times when you see product commercials, there's actually a lot more sound built into it. Like you might hear the sound of the lid, you might hear the sound of coffee being poured in, you might hear other kind of sounds that you don't associate with the music in the background. But just because I'm just doing a quick 15 second commercial, all I'm really doing is speed ramping and then throwing in a light that comes in and out. There's not a lot of actual physical sound I threw into this just because there's not a lot of actual physical stuff going on with the coffee mugs themselves. If I was doing a kind of shoot where I was basically pouring coffee in, I was placing the mugs up and down, there was other sort of noises going on, that's when I throw in those background sounds that you'd hear naturally, but you tune out because you don't realize you're actually making those sounds in real life. So that about wraps it up for this video. If you like it, subscribe, thumbs up, helps me grow as a creator. If there's any questions or comments you might have, leave them down below and I'd love to answer them and get back to you on it. Going forward, I'd love to make other kind of tips and tutorial videos for you guys. So if there's anything you want to know that I might be able to teach you guys, feel free to let me know or just leave a suggestion. And as always, let's recap.